Well, search for another missing hiker in Grand Teton National Park has also been scaled back or has been scaled back. Kean McLaughlin was last seen on June 8th. Park staff continues to monitor the backcountry and all backcountry hikers are shown a missing person poster of McLaughlin. It's important to know that we do not stop searching until we locate an individual um, like Kian, for instance. Um, but as a search goes on, we sort of have to balance the risk to searchers with the chances of finding that missing person. And crews work in a limited but continuous mode following up on clues and asking park visitors to also keep an eye out. Hello, folks, and welcome back to another case study where I talk about and analyze some of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. In this segment, we'll be discussing the disappearance of a 27 year old hacker who went missing in June of 2021. And despite several months of searches and intense media coverage, no sign of him has surfaced. Grand Teton National Park has had its fair share of incidences over the years, but just in the last several months, the park has been plagued by various crimes as well as other disappearances, but we'll get into more of this later. Kean McLaughlin, a Dublin native, vanished while hacking solo on June 8th of 2021 as he was making his way either south toward Taggart Lake, or east toward Delta Lake in the park. And as of November 2021, not a single clue is pointing to the man's whereabouts. Due to the amount of incidences that have occurred in the park during recent times, many speculate that a serial killer may be involved in the young man's disappearance. But others believe he became lost and eventually succumbed to the elements. But we'll go over the facts of this case and you can decide for yourself what may have occurred. So let's talk a little bit about Ken and what may have brought him to the area. I wasn't able to find much of any information about his personal life, but sources state that Ken was an easygoing, friendly Jackson resident who recently returned from an international trip and decided to visit the park for a day hike. In recent years, he worked as a ski instructor and was quite familiar with the area, having spent a good amount of time at the park. On the morning of June 8th, he arrived at Lupine Meadows Trailhead parking area, where his vehicle would eventually be found by searchers. He then set off on the trail texting friends, and even tried to FaceTime with his mother back at home in Ireland. According to those who last talked to him, he was in good spirits and was looking forward to the hack. Well, later on during the search, a hacker would come forward confirming this, as he too had a brief conversation with Kian that morning. On the day he went missing, McLaughlin was wearing a white t-shirt, necklace, wire-rimmed sunglasses, a red Apple watch, and he was carrying a red iPhone 12 mini. He has a large colored tattoo on his forearm and a vase tattoo on the back of his arm. He is six foot tall, about 180 pounds, with brown eyes and brown collar length hair. Though he traveled light for his day hike, he was an experienced hiker, and his absence is baffling to many. Keen was due to be back at work on June 10th, and when he didn't show, his co-workers grew concerned and filed an official missing persons report. Around this time, family and friends were notified of his disappearance as well. Though it was unknown what Keen's exact plans were, the fact that friends and family hadn't been concerned until the report was filed two days later tells me they either expected Keen to be gone for a couple of days, or they were just used to him going long periods of time between communication.
according to reports from eastidahonews.com. The last time a cell phone pinged was in the park on June 8th, around the south side of the Bradley-Taggart region, known for its rocky and glacial geology. This would be the epicenter of the early days of the search. So what was the weather like on the day of his disappearance? For June, the weather in the park can vary, of course, but can be expected to average around 75 degrees during daylight hours, but is known to reach near freezing temperatures at night. For the most part, the sun shines for around 10 hours a day. On the day of Keen's disappearance, weather records gathered from buckreel.com showed cloudy skies in the morning and eventually giving way to sunny skies, with temperatures reaching in the upper 70s by the afternoon hours. Southern gusts of around 35 miles per hour were reported later in the afternoon, bringing more clouds by evening, as nighttime temperatures cooled to around 45 degrees. In the late night hours of June 8th, and into the early morning hours of June 9th, a weak storm system moved into the area, resulting in some isolated showers and thunder. However, this was noted as being short-lived. So as far as we know, this gives us a general idea what conditions were like for those hiking in the area on that day. We gotta ask though, was Keen prepared for those colder nighttime temperatures? It doesn't appear he was. Well, how about the terrain? Was there ice and snow in the areas where he was last known to be hiking? Well, depending on where he was, he would have most likely come across a fair share of it. But we'll get a better idea of this as we discuss the search effort. Now let's take a look at the area where he was last seen, just to give you an idea of what search and rescue were up against. According to alltrails.com, Delta Lake, via Lupine Meadows access, is around an 8 to 10 mile heavy trafficked out and back trail located near Moose, Wyoming, and is a part of the Greater Grand Teton National Park System. The trail is primarily used for hiking and is not recommended during the months of November through April due to winter weather conditions. On a nice day, it will take the average hiker around two hours, or four hours round trip to reach Delta Lake. It is noted as being a challenging hike, as certain parts of the trail are unmaintained, with fallen timber and boulders obstructing the trail. There is an approximate elevation gain of around 2,300 feet, and trail markers are few and far between. According to online reviews, Here's what you can expect during your hack to Delta Lake. From Lupine Meadows Trailhead, you'll enter the Valley Trail, which gently lulls you into a false sense of security for the first mile as you meander through a flat wooden forest. At this point, the uphill portion of the hack begins until you reach a marked junction on the trail, giving you the option to veer left to continue on the valley trail or straight toward Garnet Canyon Trail. Going straight, you'll head toward Surprise and Amphitheater Lakes. From here, you'll continue uphill through a series of switchbacks that offer stunning views. There are six total switchbacks you'll need to pass through in order to reach the offshoot of Delta Lake. Once there, You'll begin to descend and enter a set of makeshift steps that are built into the dirt. And it's at this point you'll reach Delta Lake Trailhead. For the majority of those who have done this hike, it is noted as being quite rewarding and the majority of folks leave positive reviews. Now let's take a look at the surrounding area outside of Lupine and Delta Lake. Lupine Meadows Trailhead begins at 6,732 feet in elevation. 
To the north of the trailhead is Jenny Lake, the largest body of water in the region. But to the south are the two smaller lakes that many believe Kean may have ventured toward. Bradley Lake would be the first body of water you come across, followed by Taggart Lake. Now Delta Amphitheater and Surprise Lakes, being southeast of the trailhead, are nowhere near the Taggart, which is a bit confusing for searchers, knowing that Kean set out on either one of these, depending on which source you read. But if you look at the maps, there is a much easier way to access Taggart Lake without the long hike via Taggart Lake parking area just off Teton Park Road. But heading east on the trail toward the three smaller lakes, you'll slice through the Glacier Gulch to the north and Garnet Canyon to the south. This section of trail is noted as being a bit rough around the edges, and in my opinion, there's a lot of potential for things to go wrong out there. Just by looking at the photos, we can see a lot of boulder fields and even a sheet of ice that tends to stay all year round. Perhaps those who are familiar with this particular area can share their experiences in the comments section. I don't believe there would have been any reason for Kean to venture off the beaten path. So whatever harm may have come to him probably did so on the trail, or at least out at the Three Lakes. So let's switch gears and talk about the search involved. After Keen's car was discovered at the Lupine Meadows Trailhead parking area on June 8th, a massive search effort would kick off in the following days, weeks, and even months to come. Focusing initially on an area over 300,000 acres, and eventually expanding the search zone outside of the perimeter. In the early days of the search, and even in subsequent follow-up searches, they focused their efforts on both the Garnet Canyon Trail, Lupine Meadows Trail, and all the surrounding lakes, which included dozens of park rangers, search and rescue personnel, friends and family of kin, and experienced volunteers. More specifically, dog teams aided ground searches as helicopter missions would search from above during both day and night hours using FLIR technology and drone scouts. On the water, dive teams and search and rescue via boat comb the lakes. Some of the agencies involved included the Grand Teton National Park Rangers, the Teton County Sheriff's Office, Wyoming Search and Rescue, Idaho Search and Rescue, the Civil Air Patrol, the Wyoming Highway Patrol, and Teton County Search and Rescue. Those involved in the search described it as quote-unquote strenuous, and according to them, they do not believe that Keene would have strayed from the path due to the harsh terrain that surrounded it which is reported as being extremely steep, rocky, icy, and unpredictable. After a week of intense efforts, the search then became a recovery mission. Despite the worsening weather, searches continued nonetheless, as Keen's mother took over to lead the search effort. But despite all the sources, manpower, and determination poured into the search, not a single clue has turned up for the 27-year-old hacker. All potential leads were looked into, but nothing has come forward. And as of late November 2021, Ken's whereabouts remains a mystery. So what on earth happened to the young man? First, we need to take a look at the misfortune that has continued to plague the park in recent times as this may be a potential clue in his disappearance. As many of you know, several folks have either gone missing or have become victim to tragedy in modern times within Grand Teton National Park. In late October of 2021, the body of a 26-year-old hiker named Jared Hambry was found during the search for another missing hiker, 46-year-old Robert Lowry, whose body was found a short time later. 
Though Robert's cause of death was deemed to be self-inflicted, Jared's cause of death is still being investigated. In late September, the remains of Gabby Petito were found after her disappearance earlier that month. In that case, her boyfriend Brian Laundry was thought to have been responsible. In September of 2016, the body of a missing 21-year-old hacker named Renee Dreeling was discovered after a suspected fall. In July of 2014, a missing hiker named Will Corrin was found deceased at the bottom of a cliff. He was the fifth casualty in the park just in 2014 alone. So this gives us an idea of how much potential there is for things to go wrong in the park. And if you continue to research the park's history, the list of names just keeps popping up. But on top of this, it is suspected that a serial killer may be hiding in the park as well. Triple homicide suspect, 61-year-old Mike Bollinger, who murdered three women in 2017 before disappearing, was thought to be hiding in the Grand Teton Wilderness after being spotted by witnesses in the summer of 2018. Some believe unidentified remains found in the area later that year were that of the missing suspect, but no confirmation of this was given, as the remains just may belong to one of the countless victims to go missing in that area over the years. So could this give us an idea of what may have occurred to Kian? Well, if he wasn't victim to found play, the harsh terrain may have helped play a role in his disappearance. It's not difficult to imagine that someone could easily have a fall or accident out there in the park, as the history has shown. Could he have wandered off the main trail, or decided to take a shortcut and hiked into oblivion? Anything's possible. How about animal predation? Well, one of the first things you'll notice are the bare warning signs as you enter the Lupine Meadows Trailhead. Grand Teton National Park is home to a diverse population of wildlife, including elk, bison, moose, wolf, pumas, black bears, and grizzly bears. If you cross any of these animals under the wrong circumstances, it won't be good for you. Unfortunately, we just aren't able to narrow it down. With the lack of hard evidence in this case, or any clues to go on, we're all left in a forest full of questions, and a lake full of curiosity. Keen's disappearance is yet another harsh reminder that although Grand Teton National Park is a stunning place to visit, it has a dark history that continues to warn us with each tragic situation we're presented with. There's no doubt that disappearances will continue to occur in the park. And when it does, I'll be sure to keep it on my radar, as well as any new information that may come forward pertaining to Keen's whereabouts. Perhaps someday we'll find the answers we're looking for, but until then, we can only speculate what may have happened to him based on what we do and don't know. If you have any tips, leads, or information pertaining to this case, or others who have gone missing in the park, contact Teton County Search and Rescue at 307-732-8337. Thanks for joining me in this segment, and may we never forget the sad and strange disappearance of Kean McLaughlin.